Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Our Smiling Faces podcast. And it is the return. It's been two weeks now and nothing else has happened. So <laughs> we're back just to go over everything again. <laughs> no, we've, well. we've got a question answer out once again. It's me, Chris. We've got Dekaya, Mark and Bestie. First of all, to Bestie. How are you doing, mate? We haven't seen you for a little while. You had the Rona, didn't you? <laughs> Great. I'm grand. No, I'm on the mend. I'm on the mend. I'm, I'm, I'm like, you hear about people kind of thinking they've got it and then they go like, down downhill, but I think I'm fixed. I'm all right. like I, I, hope so. <laughs> I hope it's not the low before time, the that- storm. That time in there was incredible, Bessie. I applaud you on that one. That, one. Oh, that, that was great. We might as well just end it, yeah, because we're not going to get any better than that, are <laughs> God almighty, that was amazing. So a full recovery, mate, yeah? Pretty much, I think so, I I. Well, I, so, honestly, Bessie, I think that, I know it's been two weeks, but I think you look about at least a year younger. So whatever you've done in them two weeks has been fantastic. So well done. I mean, thank, that thank poor, you, poor lad, Annie, dies, but he, but he looks a bit younger. <laughs> <laughs> Every cloud. <laughs> if you get it again, you might go back another couple right. of years. Hey, you know what I mean? Probably Benjamin Button. <laughs> You'd be like this by the end of it, wouldn't he? Exactly. I'm just going to fire straight in with the first question. And this one is for Bestie. So Ooh. it's from our mate Drew. Drew Peacock. Peacock. Yeah. Peacock. So. He, he forgot about you, Bessie, didn't he? Earlier this week, <laughs> he did. I was it oh, yesterday? Oh, it was um, well it was done last night, wasn't it? Mark and Emil. So basically, like just, just saying thanks for like the whole podcast and everything, and <laughs> he forgot yeah. Bestie. <laughs> Mine, I, I, it depends on how we look at it. He's either forgetting about us or he's mistaken us for a meal, and I'll take that. Like, yeah, it's good <laughs> to get. It's because you're so thin. thin. It's because you're so thin and young now. That's what it is. As long as it's a side partner, man, to cultivate another, another three cases of Corona, and you might look like a meal mate. <laughs> so, listen, I, no, I'll yeah, take that, like. so so you apologise to me. You sent in a question, just no. basically apologising for for forgetting about you. I think you forgot about him because he just sits so still and doesn't move. Who bestie? Yeah. He does normally yeah. on the podcast. Yeah, I don't know if that's me. me you know, it. like three pictures p- stitched yeah, together, it. all in exactly the same position. <laughs> one of the one of the fa- my famous favorite photos ever of me and Bessie, right, is when you were talking shite, Mark. Remember? And there's, there's so a, many to choose from. There's me and me and Bestie <laughs> are like happen. me and Bestie. I'm I'm like like I think I'm like this, and then Bestie's like looking. Oh, it is. So so Mark says something, and and you're like that, and, and I'm just like this. I'm gone. <laughs> best is like uh, it's absolutely brilliant really funny the best thing about moments like that is best he tries to like understand everyone's sort of opinion yeah. on this one and even at yeah. that point best he's like what the <laughs> fuck is he talking about I'm going to find it and send you it later because it's really good, it's really good. <laughs> right so we'll, we'll get straight in with the Newcastle questions so got any Leeds ones like <laughs> what else is there going to be <laughs> They were going to be Newcastle questions. <laughs> mate, come, I, I bet you I'll find one that's not Newcastle related, mate. I can't, I can't believe we're, uh, that's can't can't believe we're jumping me. straight into football like, without talking about like food or takeaways or something for 20 there minutes. Is, well, there's a couple of questions drinking. about food. What are you drinking now? All right, what are you drinking? I was going to ask Bestie before, wasn't I? I'm on the pint cans. <sighs> Jesus. That the same massive, size that, as Bestie, that, at the minute. I'm on the uh, um, Aldi, Aldi Snides. <laughs> Bestie used to look like what, Mark's like, drink. <laughs> I'm drinking that. Be rum already, and what out of that? Ah, <coughs> oh, it looked ah, oh, it looked bigger. It looked it looked massive. Oh, Italian beer Greek. in a Greek. Like if I had a pound drunk. every time I heard that. So, so how many bottles is in that glass then? One. Really? No. Bloody hell! Oh well. Has anybody tried the uh, the Aldi Moretti yet? That I recommended the other night. Nah, not on it yet. You need to get on it. It's lovely. I'm on except, the uh, except Jack because he doesn't like it. The old Hig. De- Decker's celebrating something. Uh, uh, why, why are you not you leaving your whiskey to celebrate? No, I just uh, I was I was looking at my collection in the corner and I was like, do you know what it is? I don't hardly <laughs> drink. Oh, I've got a collection of whiskey. <laughs> what? Mate, you get more Tory each week. 
<laughs> I've got a collection of whiskey. And I, I was thought... just just sipping on a cognac as I looked into my uh, cigar <laughs> collection. Yeah, it's not a nice smoking <laughs> jacket. That's exactly how I sound as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I thought tonight I'll, I'll crack one open and with you because I haven't seen Bestie for a bit, and I thought you know we're all back together for the first time in a few weeks, you know. So I thought I'll have a celebrating. He's still alive, of course. Yeah, just, of course, just hanging in there. So sorry. Anyway, go on to your uh, question and answer. Chris. Um, so yeah, first question. I've lost it now, but we'll, we'll find it. So Daryl Mitchell Hill sends in. So Daryl no, fell off his not. bike the other week as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's not funny. Poor lad could have hurt, could have hurt himself. Has he fell off before? Don't know. I, feel well, like I thought heard he, this before. he he put like he put something on saying he fell off his bike, and then like a couple of days later, he put something else about falling off his bike, and I was like, it was a long he fall. fell off again. <laughs> well, I tell you something, Daryl. I fell off my chair when I seen the picture you put on the other day. There was it was it on the was it the call or something? It was on the, the the Newcastle call, and it was like, are you on this, George or something? And it was just him, just front and centre. It was like that. Hi, I'm Daryl. Oh, that, was that, just... that was when Daryl uh, he cut his hair, hadn't he? Oh, was, he, oh that was it. Yes. At, uh, well, I've joined you, mate. I've, skin I've, I've, old, I've done the same. So mine's not coming back either. I'm going to keep it as forever. So, so his question that he sends in, he says, "Does anybody know where to get a bike fixed?" No, it's not that one. <laughs> so I think the bikes all fixed. To be fair, mate, he, he talks. So this has been the, the major talking point the, the last couple of days, I would say. So he says thoughts on the digital tune hall on Monday. Did we watch it? Well, so, well, I was I was going to, but then I heard from yourselves reporting back that it was was difficult to watch. So I, I didn't. it was. <sighs> That's so, one word for it. I, I think I think it was it was a good idea idea initially. I think it had all the, the right reasons for doing it, but the delivery on it what was shocking to to, to 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 be honest with you. It, it took a good 20, 25 minutes to figure out what you had to do to get on the YouTube video. They had two streams running at the same time which oh. not got everything up it's the delivery what was bad um i'm not so, sure so, so why was that how was that then like it's because they didn't have adam there to sort it out yeah true. um I'm, I'm not sure if they've done any trial runs of it mate or they just basically winged it thinking uh-huh. we'll upload it to zoom yeah uh, sorry we'll upload the zoom meeting to mm-hmm. youtube and we'll yeah. take it from there and it just it it didn't work it, it like i said it took 20 minutes to get it going but it was working in the end. You had to rewind it a little bit before the audio came on. Yeah. But it, it started in the it, when when I tuned into it. I think the first the first fifteen minutes, which I heard, it was all people against the takeover. So you had obviously representatives from Amnesty on there. You had reads and readings from the journalist's fiance who was murdered over in Saudi. There was a couple of other people who had readings on there as well. Um. So. Like I said, the first 15 minutes were, were pretty against it. And I thought, is this going to get balanced at any point here? Or are we basically getting a stick here and just beating the shit out of anything Saudi related at the minute? As it went on, more people spoke. So Steve Wraith got on. Steve was, was so in world peace at one point with Newcastle United and the Saudis. But to, <laughs> to be fair, Steve, Steve's came under some crap recently. But Steve's. He, He's got. He's passionate about the club. We can't say he's not, and I think he just wants the same as us. He wants the best for the club. So I, I think, have to totally disagree. Like really, I think he's only passionate when when he wants to be. It wasn't. Well, it was way. only. It was only a few weeks ago, months ago, that this takeover wasn't happening. There was nothing in it. Very start of this, when it was all coming out, he he was kind of pouring uh, pouring water on it all saying nah it's not happening and everything like this and then as it's gone on he, he's he's changed his tune um as it's kind of progressed and he's had more and more limelight um as a result of it well he, steve's a promoter at the end of the day oh. this is what he does so it's i honestly think personally steve's harmless i quite i quite like steve to be honest with you he does things which are questionable at times but I, I like the bloke, mate. He's a well, good you, lad. You, yeah, when you're dressing as a, a vicar or whatever, and you know there's issues, you know, outside the ground, like yeah. Um, but being being honest, I think I'm sure I messaged you a lot where I had been watching a few videos that he had been on. And I thought he came across fantastically well, like really well. Um, very passionate, and he's the arguments that he's making. I thought were brilliant. Like to, to be honest, um, 
He's tweeting in Arabic at the minute, so you need to stop that, Steve, if you're watching this. I'll tell you that. He had pictures of camels on the other day. I'm sure I've gone across the desert. He did. Got to be he careful. Did. Like. He's gone. He did. Yeah. So, sorry to go back to this call. Sorry, just for a second. The call mm. you're on about. So, was it just a bashing then? Was it really? If, if that, if that, it shouldn't it's, go it ahead? Started, it, it did start off that way, mm. if I'm being honest. But as the, the night went on, it was on for nearly three hours, mate. As it went on. It, it started even itself out, became a lot more balanced. Right. Um, like I said, Steve was speaking on there. Um, Neil, Jordy Dennis, who, who's been on the podcast a couple of times, yeah. he was on there. He, he came across really well um, Good. on it, to be honest with you. And there was fans, just normal fans. Alex Hurst was there from the, the Supporters Trust. So it, it did. Was, 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 George, was George just kind of like leading it, or did he have an George, a, a George was cheering it, mate. No, oh. George was cheering it. He, he just sat there, introduced people and, and things yeah. like that. Right. Um, cool. Personally... I, I don't think we really achieved anything, if I'm being honest with you. Um, it just seemed to be things repeating what we've already seen on social media. Um, but it, it was a platform there, and it, it's been twisted at the minute, though. Have you, have you seen the things from being sports? Yeah, I saw yeah. that earlier on. Anyway. Yeah, Newcastle so the, fans are dead against the Saudi takeover. Yeah, and, so they've, they've yeah. took snippets of the recording to go against it, basically saying Newcastle fans don't want this to happen. Which it, it, I don't think it's going to affect anything in the long run, but it's you're giving them that platform on you to to do to, to take those snippets and have an opportunity to. to, 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 to it's a form of propaganda, isn't it? Like you know, yeah. where obviously the Qataris and the Saudis have got a, a beef, shall we say? And it's any stick that the Qataris can use to beat the Saudis and the um, PIF and the takeover, they're going to use it. Um, mm. And I mean, that's not to say that the, the Saudis are the innocent victims in the whole thing, like, you know what I mean? But oh, no. it's, it's just how it works out, you know, it's, it's, it's Newcastle and Sunday, like, on a massive, massive scale. It's, it's, it's got football, the football is it really, but it's just one of those things that, like, it's always going to be like that. It's like, do you know, do you know what, million. I, I couldn't get my head around, like, a lot of the people that were talking on, like I said, I did, I did watch quite a bit of this. A lot of people were saying that there's no place in football for politics. The, the meeting was hosted by a politician. Which I, I couldn't figure true, out. I? Yeah, I, I yeah. couldn't figure it out. So it's it's a strange. You can watch it back. So so if you go on YouTube and watch it back, I would honestly, I, so, I would probably hmm. skip it until. What was his wife on? Then the reporter's wife was on. Yeah, it was a reading. Yeah. So there was a transcript from her. I think, mate. Right, so it was okay. a reading from her. Basically, was similar to that the she left, gonna... which had been sent in. Yeah, it was. It was said in advance of it that she she was going to be a guest and she was going to be part of it uh, in the lead up to it, but. Obviously, that didn't come to fruition. I'm sure. I'm sure it was just a transcript. Like I said, mate, the first 15 minutes I, I missed quite a bit of it, but I'm right. sure I'm like 99% positive it was just a, a read. Yeah, it, was, it was just a, a statement that was kind of read out. To, to be fair, credit to George, about. George Colton on this one because he was ruthless. So everyone had a two minute slot, and he was ruthless. If you were gone out of that, he was stopping you in your tracks. It, was one up, that... it would go on for all day, wouldn't it? You know what I mean? If you didn't tell us about what we used to be. Well, that's true. Did any of you watch that documentary I sent you about uh, Mohammed? That guy, you love this documentary. Absolutely honestly, love it. Mate, How many times a day do you mention this documentary? It's it's honestly, it's really good. Like, you need to invest some time. It's on for two hours, like, but honestly, it's fantastic. Like, it's unreal. Do you want to explain to people what this documentary is? Well, it's a, it's a form of propaganda. It. No, it's it's not. It's 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 done by Frontline. I can post it on, and it's really. Then they do the the um, animal stuff, the ticks and the trees and that. You what? Sorry, <laughs> I didn't hear that. What was that? That's what you oh. said. Go on. Oh, so I didn't hear it. I did it off. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's so it's basically about that. Bin Salam and just like who who he is and stuff in in that things for example for twitter that he pays this this actual, this person to create bots on twitter that push his narrative he controls everything that comes out of saudi in regards to twitter he thinks that's the biggest platform to, for people to go against what he demands um women's rights locking up women left right and center there's one woman still in prison now like one hour out um and obviously it's the reporter where it shows you the doctor footage of where they had dressed up the guy looking like him but he di he didn't have the same trainers on when he left the restaurant because the guy couldn't wear the actual reporter's trainers because he had a different size feet. That's how the police caught them. Because I on, he went in with these trainers on. He's come out with these ones on. Hence, that's how the how the caught and all. And the reporter actually messages Mohammed and says, "Listen, did you have anything to do with this?" And at the very end, he's like, "This is his reply." And he's like, "Well, I'm not going to say I didn't. I'm not going to say I didn't, but but these things happen." 
And I'm like, fucking hell. So basically, you're saying that you did it, basically. So it's honestly, you need to watch it. It's, it's incredible. It's absolutely what we'll do, De- Degav, you send me the link later on, well, me or Adam the link, and we'll we'll put it in the description of this video, yeah. just in case people do want to catch up with it. Oh, it's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So next question from Marty Lawrence. Metro Marty. Marty. So that that's... Bestie, does he know your dad? Is that right? He used to work with me. He's a fireman. Fireman, right? isn't he? Fireman. I mean, my dad was a fireman as well. I worked together in Washington, like, Christ, 40 years ago, maybe, I. So he sends in, all right, lads, um, bearing in mind nobody knows when or even if next season will start, do you expect an almighty scramble for season tickets in June if the takeover has been successful? Also says, stay safe. 100%. I think so, like, yeah. It, you, you're, looking, you're looking at waiting lists, aren't you, in the future? Yeah, undoubtedly, there's no two way. I mean, obviously, caveat speed if the state's in James's Park and don't extend, which I don't think realistically they would do. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I know all probably half a dozen lads off, off the top of my head that want tickets for, next, like, for as soon as possible. Yeah, so yeah, if, if it happens, if the takeover happens and it starts bashing cash, I mean, there's talk of players coming in, I'm, I'm sure we'll get a rate on. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got no doubt that the appetite will just be you'll you'll see people kind of clamoring for tickets. And like where this season there's games I've not been able to get me where no one wants to take a ticket off you. Yeah. Um that I think if if, if it's, it's all if and if and if and if. But I I think the appetite will be there. And if they win a few games with the new shirts nice, they get like a good number nine, that's it. You're, you're looking at yeah. you're looking at waiting list again. <clears throat> So it takes there, a little little spark, a yeah. little spark of success. But um, the the just the excitement behind it all is is bringing everybody out wanting uh, to get back. People that haven't you know been there for years, years and years and years. Mm-hmm. Some people might call those glory supporters. <laughs> Careful, are you you're ready for the mag, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get bestie start on the mag again. Oh, don't get him started. Yeah. So we actually got a um, a tweet sent in from was was it Chris that worked for the mag? But Bestie mentioned him a couple oh, of weeks ago, and you saying just like you know, I, I don't write for the mag anymore. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Chris did. Yeah. The, uh, it was a thing called Sweet Left Foot. He did it for years. It was a really good. It was one of the kind of perennial um, articles was, that he got. Was in the it mag about Laurent Robert? It was. It was all about. Um, I, I can't think of funny. Christy Brown. It was all, <laughs> all about John Beresford. But no, it was, it was you know, I think it was in there as long as I can remember. It was really good. It was a good read. And I think the mag, I'm not going to kind of put the boot in now, but the mag was when it was in print. It was a fantastic fanzine. Like, yeah. It was really, really good. I mean, I remember I'd, go, I'd, I'd walk to the shops just for that. When I knew it would come out, I'd go and buy the mag and that'd be, that'd be a real reading it. How, long, how yeah. long was the mag around for? A long time, from oh, the 80s. Yes, to, yes. I mean, you're looking at, I think, 25, 20, really? 30 years. I, I remember it when I was a kid. Yeah. I used to buy the pink. I used to always go and buy the pink. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I used to often pick up me copy of the mag at that point when I used to go and get the pink on a Saturday or whatever. Um, it was a fantastic magazine, I must admit. It was very the mag and the, the black and white just... magazine as well. That was the other, other the one. The... Magazine. Do, you think it's just dropped... Do you think it's dropped so much because of... The whole printing scenario, how how no one really buys prints much these days, or is it a fact where it's just gone shite? I think it's because they've got it's not it's not like that like people that are, are writers for that magazine now. It just they'll just let anybody kind of put yeah. articles in it, so it's it's like an open fanzine now. So mm. if you want to write something in there and put your point of view across, you can do it. You can drop it in. Um, whereas beforehand, you would have, you would have had maybe four or five writers that were yeah. uh, putting yeah. pieces and, together and, and yeah. edit that kind of with a hand on the teller. And in itself, that's not a bad thing. I mean, you, you'll probably get some young lads who are shocking at the minute who grow to be really good writers because they get that experience and they kind of get the feedback and stuff. And in, in, in itself, it's probably not a bad thing, but I just don't, well, it's it's not the mag anymore. It's like two different, it's like the mag ceased to be when they stopped printing it and now they've got this online thing, which to me shares a name, but doesn't have any of the, um, the kind of, oh, I don't want to say the quality because there are some, uh, there are some good, there have been some good articles in the mag. There's a couple of writers on there who are actually really good. Um, and that's kind of their conduit, like, you know, that's their avenue, that's what they use. Um, but yeah, to me, the day the last print uh, issue came out was the end of the mag, and now it's just something else that's called the mag. 
that I mm. can't have. There's, there's no like, it's just such a different thing. I think yeah. it's hard as well, though. I think a lot of people <clears throat> like want want the 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 news that is current. They want that instantly. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. like for example, this way, for example, we'll we'll chat about whatever's being news this week or whatever it might be. Hundreds of people can do that now. Um, Whereas if you bought the mag, that, that technically could be out of date by the time you actually went and bought your copy. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. Whereas before it wasn't, this type of stuff wasn't available then, do you know what I mean? So you would go and buy it and, and you'd be quite happy to sit and read it. Whereas I just think now it has to be more current it, instantly as well, which is very hard. But the newspapers printed, then, struggle for that these days now, they do, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Very you know, that's why people don't, don't go out and buy a physical copy of a newspaper anymore because you can get all of the news immediately onto your phone or your, your, your device it's really to have hard. it there and then. So, yeah, it's, it's the weird way are, isn't it? To get it, if you can, as deep as you want, like it, it, the, the way you consume everything's changed, like Sky Sports News, for instance, uh, BBC News, Sky News, you, you've got the news. If you, if you don't read it, if you haven't got Twitter, you don't buy a newspaper anymore because as soon as it's printed, it's obsolete. You put a box on, and like Sky Sports News, and it's a, a Criticism that I've made of it in the past, where they'll put stuff on that isn't news, they'll sensationalise. We've all mm. seen it this last fortnight, and I'm, I'm sure someone will come up eventually anyway. Where the takeover thing apparently just hasn't moved for a couple of weeks because of because of whatever, um, and people do write because they've got to have clicks, they've got to have readers, they've got to have people viewing advertising videos, whatever, and it's um, it's filling that void, um, and it's all, it does, it's all because of Sky Sports News, but you can sit and watch that channel it's on for 24 hours a day and there's not 24 hours worth of news in football mm. especially at the minute like it's fucking nothing happening but league goes back that's it yeah no you, you, you've hit the nail on the head there like and, and what Deco was saying that that about the current situation in regards to social media and stuff like that we've seen over the last few weeks of, of like stuff that we've done for, from this channel and, and podcast where you've got Journalists and journalists were probably your main go-to people for for news in regards to sport, especially local sport. And, and we've seen it ourselves with the likes of Shell and Reese are, are putting things out before they've even clicked on in regards to the whole company's house things and stuff like that. It's it's so accessible at the minute. And because we've got platforms like YouTube, social media, and Facebook, things like that, like, like I said, anyone can do it. So it's it's a hard, hard market to be in, isn't it? And a hard industry to be in at the minute. But you Especially when you demand back. to get people on the website. You cast your mind back not so long ago. We we've had, we always laugh about it now or cry. Um, we sat and had a podcast about it. Would it be Wenger, Mourinho, or whoever it was? Mm-hmm. And then I think mm-hmm. two days later, I believe it was Bruce coming. It was almost yeah. like that. Now you imagine we had written that in print that, oh, could yeah. it be Mourinho? Could it be Wenger? That goes and gets released maybe the following week. My God, it's a laughing stock piece of paper, right? Because like Bruce would have been yeah. in charge by that, by people who have actually went and bought the magazine. It would have been a joke. Yeah. Um, so, do you know what I mean? Anyway, it's just, it's very hard. It's very difficult. So, next one, Lee Forster sends in um, the new owners contact you and allow you, allow you to decide the first thing they do upon taking control of the club. One act to win the fans over, it has to be. So, it can't be a major thing. So, no long term plan. So, you can't say it likes of academy training facilities. It's just going to be an initial impact decision which will get fans on board. Promote me as director of football. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Imagine. You know what mine's going to be so someone else can go. Um, The most obvious thing I would say is take stuff off furlough. It's, it's the most obvious thing, isn't it? We're not like repeat answers either. We're all going to have separate answers. Oh shit, I'm going last as well. <laughs> someone steal deckers. Quick. Free, free pints and pies at every match. Remember when Ashley did that? Well, not not every match, sorry. Let hear us out here. Yeah. Uh, I think we had just done a deal with Carl and then everyone got a free pint when they went in the ground. That was like early tenure of yeah. early tenure of Ashley. I remember I was there and I got my free pint. No, I can't I remember, remember the, the, well, you, the the That's because you're at the ground at ten o'clock yeah. every match day. Yeah, but you don't get that little five past three. You're too busy wanking dogs off on the street and that's so you know what I mean. That's what it is. Oh, not on the street. No, I remember not, I, um, not the street made. I, I remember the Pop My Drums promotion that was like you get a free pizza if Newcastle scored in the we didn't score a goal before like injury time for fucking months. Mike Williamson what? was like the, the face of that randomly. <clears throat> Did he not deliver oh, yeah, a pizza to a fan? He makes like, makes like pizzas, eh? I would do that job. Like I'd be the one for that. Like name bother. Papa John sign us up. I'll deliver every pizza you've got. Right. So I've got furlough. So staff coming off furlough. What was yours, bestie? Um I, I was a really obvious one that I think I'm gonna save for dinner. Oh no. 
mine would be to get rid of the new version of Blazing, Blazing Races. Oh, okay. Now yeah. that's a sh- shall we play Dick as local hero instead? Aye. So it doesn't really doesn't really get you up for the game, though. No, it's it? a bit depressing. Yeah, what you want different. is a bit of electronic dance music. <laughs> so can I can I ask something about that song? Because I'm I'm in agreement with you, best I am. Um, do you hate all of it? Or, I hate or... the, you know, it is. I, since I've been a band, I, I've been. I can't remember my first game. Like I mean, my dad took us when I was two or something. Um, and like it in my memory, it's always been Busker's version of Blade and Races, like in the nineties. When the, I, I sat in the leases, like when they finished second a couple of times and and all that carry on and when the Champions League and it was always the same version of Blade and Race. I just love it. Aye. And that's yeah. like, that's yeah. like it's like local hero to me. I'm playing uh, Run for Home at full time. I love Run for Home, I yeah. and it's it's like yeah. it's So what's your thoughts on, on going home then? Like because I I'm I'm sure if I remember right here under Root Hullet we changed it, we didn't have that song when we came out under Root Hullet for a bit and that really pissed me yeah. off. Yeah, um, I think we did briefly. I, I can't remember what it was. Obviously you had like Premier League anthems of have come in since so they've got like, yeah. other time and all that. But I, I hate that I, when it comes in. I they're all they've always been terrible then. Um, I in, I I think they did change it and there's been talk that it's not. I, I suppose similar to what Charlie Methan was on about in in in, in their program saying well you've got to have someone that gets a, gets a crowd going and all that and it gets this and that's I think what was the rationale behind the the, the current version of Blade and Racer that it's, it's yeah. really drum heavy and it's kind of like it it gets a it, it might initiate the whatever. But it's just shite, right? I think there's... Because yeah. no, what, what I was meaning, sorry, when I asked you about, like, do you like, I, I actually don't mind the drum part, to be honest with you, at the start. No. Um, so, but see, I, the rest... I'm the same. Like, I, it, it doesn't bother me. I, I don't think it's bad when, at all. When the club first did it, there was a hell of a lot of criticism. Because it was, was it War Flags that were a part of it as well? I think so, yeah. War Flags it recorded it, didn't they? So the club right. invited those, and it was was members of that group that, that recorded it. And there was hell on, because basically the, the ruined what we imagine of that song to be honest with you like what Bessie just described there but like like, like I said I'm never there to hear it anyway but <laughs> what what does worry is though and going back because Bessie made a good point there and that's what I was going to say that wanker off that Sunderland documentary now can you imagine right just imagine let's say the takeover goes through and we're the next people on Prime right let's just say we are and then there's some Tom Dick and Harry comes in here who's the new director of football or what technical director and he's like oh I fancy a bit of Trava music before they come out fuck going home and shit that like um, that actually, would really hurt me. That would fucking really hurt. Like if they yeah. whack some scooter on, like I'm all for that. Like get the, well, the, the only thing for me, the was, sacred was, cow. Get the, the the beatboxing Spider Man on the pitch. Yes, and Paul Pop. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Like, hey, Paul what was your thoughts of it? Remember in the derby when they had thingy going round the pitch singing it? Um, forgot his name now. Big lad with the flag. I with the flag. Yeah. I, what was your thoughts to that? With that scenario, I didn't like it. No, I didn't either. I thought, I, I thought, it, it. I thought, <laughs> I thought, I thought one of was going to say, I quite liked it. No, I hated it. I think in theory, it, it was, it made quite a, like, um, I don't know, like quite a, quite a serious point. And like, you know what I mean? It was, it was really focusing on something for a few minutes and he, he walked around the pitch and that, but I thought it was quite, quite awful to be honest with you. But I didn't care for it. Like, it, it, it's one of those things that like, if it works, it's brilliant. Yeah. If it, yeah. If it works and you can like, like when the beat, um, I think it was when they beat Angie in the UEFA Cup or the Europa League and they played rock and roll over the world all the yeah. time. It was like that. Unbelievable. Was unbelievable. Was unbelievable. And that, was that, and that, if, yeah. that could have been that kind of thing, but it just didn't work. And it's one of those, it's like a knife edge thing. You never know how things you're are right. going to be received. Oh, you're right. If you notice, when <clears throat> Jade from Little Mix is there, because she goes quite often when she's home, they'll right. play a Little Mix song Yeah. as well. Really weird. I didn't realise that. I like Little Mix. Uh, all right. The, they play a little mix song. Well, I like it when they play loads of like Newcastle stuff, like they play the uh, Big River, for example. Some, so, but I think yeah. I think though, having said that, it's like people request these songs, or there's certain people who are in charge of the playlist for for that for that day or whatever of that match. And there's like some it's people, just half half time that this songs are normally different. It's a half time. It always seems to be exactly the same songs, like before the game and after the game. Uh, yeah, you get the Ramones at some point. You get like the, like the, the going the going home comes on. It's Another, uh, I can I can have two. I'd get rid of the um, MC as well. Get a meal in. Yes, I would. I would get. It, actually, if we get a meal on, so if we get a meal working for the club, that means we'll probably lose a meal. So mm. we'll not give him that gig. Yeah, but that's good for him, though, right? <laughs> I wouldn't grudge him it. I'd be grudge him it. Like, nah, it's good for him. <laughs> you get meal, there, meal be hard. Nah, he's, he's he's too hard to replace, mate. <laughs> he is, he's that, one of a kind. That job's gone downhill since Barry in the box left. 
Was he oh, yeah, the team was in the tunnel, or was it made the best team win? We all know who that is. Exactly, that was the one. And then he, uh, he, he was, he was at Newcastle Speedway for years and years. I think he retired last year or the year. Just before. Going, going around the track, like <laughs> doing, doing the same crack, burying the box. <laughs> right. So, what's yours? What's yours, Mark and Decker? Hey, well, Mark's already said pies and pints, right? Or was that just a joke? I mean, I'll take that. Well, well, nah, you'll well, take a pie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> m- mine's obviously Kevin Keegan stand or Kevin Keegan statue. Ooh. That's all right. Yeah. 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 Well, um, could I... that be cl- class as long term? Well, it'll be there for the rest of life, I guess. Exactly. So pretty damn long term. But it I takes think it's... a while to make a statue as well. <laughs> yeah. So I'd go with the stand, as I've said before. As I said on here as is a. Uh, the East Stand changed that to Kevin, the, the, the so, Kevin Keegan stand. If the East Stand was to change to the Kevin Keegan stand, do you take the Newcastle United off the top of that stand this is and replace actually it with what, Kevin Keegan? Honestly, mate, that's what I thought of. You know, after the podcast we did, I thought I sat and thought, how on if you do that, you've got to change the name. I would so, probably think maybe man, you did outside, it, didn't I? At Old Trafford, yeah, they did. With, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I outside. think maybe on the outside somehow have a have something because I think it. Yeah, you cannot take them them letters get, away. Get, I, mean, I would love it on the seats. <laughs> hey, do you know? Do you know? I've sorry, like I'm a perm to... like hanging down from like where the floodlights are, like have perm hair hanging down. I, have you like like all read is, Keegan's is, book? A... Oh God, years ago. You would have. No, the, the newest one. The new the newest one. one. Oh no, huh? no, no. Not in have full. You know, I've read bits of it. Do you know, it's funny because obviously the age you are, like age I am, and, and I, of course I remember that time. But I was young then. Do you know what I mean? In the nineties, it was it was amazing. But and I honestly always thought that when Keegan did that speech, I love it. That, that was it. That's when we we lost the league and it was, you know, we're fucked. And you read Keegan's book and he's on about some statistics and that. And we only had one game left. Man United were already ahead of us at the time when Keegan did that speech of I'd love it if we beat them. Like the league yeah, was already was, gone anyway. It made no Was that difference. Forest Away? Forest Away, yeah, yeah. Was well that was when, what, what, I think we had them coming up or we had anyway. Leeds. Uh, it was going on the, the last yeah. the, the game where if they if they won or something like that or, or then, then it would have went down to, like, well, the, the, the wire or something. What, like what, that. what, what yeah, actually happened? Yeah, we were on the Spurs, weren't we? Hmm. Le- Le- Leeds. Sorry, I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry. I will get back on no, it. No, no, carry on. Um, <laughs> so um, Leeds went down to ten men, right, and they had no goalkeeper as a sub, so they had to put a defender in goal, and it took Roy Keane until the last minute to beat them one nil, and Ferguson kicked off in an interview saying that I don't reckon Leeds would have performed that well against anybody else, but because it's Man United, they did. And he was then he started slagging off our next opponent, saying, Ah, oh, these will not give a shit because they're playing Newcastle. And that's when then Keegan says, Well, are you saying Stuart Pierce won't care because that was Forrest, of course, yeah, blah blah. That's right. Guy. But what, what was interesting though was is that I always in my mind thought that that interview came and then there was like eight games to go, and then we lost the league by the 12 points that we all know about. But actually, my United were already ahead of us at that point when Keegan did that interview, and there was only one game left. And Keegan says, I don't know why everyone thinks we lost the league because of what I said. The league was already fucking done anyway. Technically, he's right. It was. So the two things that normally get blamed for for losing the 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 league there, well, not losing the league, but obviously not winning it, is two players. So it's normally Aspria that comes to mind and David mm. Batty, isn't it? Batty Keegan yeah. mentions that in the book as well. Batty just got absolutely hated. Like, is it Batty? Uh, is, is it, so Batty? We changed formation, didn't we? we when Rob Batty Lee came up, in, it? yeah. Rob, Rob Lee Batty got in, and a lot of people. Clock like that, like. got dropped, didn't he? Clock got dropped, didn't he? And another thing as well, he says, which again is interesting about the defence. Everyone always says we couldn't defend. Shit at defending. We're all out of attack. We're all out of attack. We didn't score as many goals as Man United. So there's one. But also going into the last game of the season, um, Man United only had a, a one goal better. Uh, one had only conceded one less goal than us. And so, like, you know, everyone always thinks it's because we're all, all out attacking. Yeah, it's quite it's quite fascinating when you when you listen to that. I'm like, Fuck I think we'll that. have to do a, a whole separate podcast just on Sorry, Decker talking about Keegan's interview because <laughs> I, I imagine you could go on for ages. Yeah, yeah, I, I know it's just sorry, I just yeah. But to go back to the question, sorry, uh, a Keegan stand for me would be would be fantastic. Yes, you're right, it is longevity, but I just feel it's an easy thing to do quickly. Right, so I've I, got like Furlow staff, one. Bestie's got changing the music. Yeah, Decker's got right. Keegan stand. Mark's got a pie. Actually, it's ridiculous. I haven't even, I haven't even fucking said Sports Direct. Signs That's didn't exactly be... what I was going to say. We've got yeah. all this stuff happening, but Sports Direct still understand. Yeah. I'm just taking as that as a given, though, a to given. be honest with you. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, as, 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 I, as I shared with you this week, rumour rumor has it that uh, work work has already started to happen on uh, mm-hmm. on that. So I've seen, I seen a photo of the training ground today, mate, and there's still some boards here. Like... So, well, on them photos I sent you, 
but there's, there's certainly a hell of a lot less yeah. than than there was. There used to be everywhere. Do you know, do you know that four year cent though? Is that not the, the the training pitch at the far end? I'm no, sure that's the one that they don't use. It's the one again. It obviously it's a, it, uh, against the fence, but if you look beyond that first pitch, you can see the the main pitch pitches where mm. the train outside of the uh, bungalow. I think you've got three pitches. Well, you've got four, including the indoor one, but you've got one that the goalkeeper has used. Then you've yeah. got the four one where that four was taken. Then you've got the one where the, the train it all day, every day. So, so I, if you I'm, look, if you yeah. look across to towards the the bungalow or the the training facility, if that's what you want to call it, the, the, there's literally Shit two all. two in the far bungalow. distance, like there. But all of the <laughs> like all of the the dividers of all of the pitches all the way around is normally covered covered in them. Yeah. Like any any time that you go past on on the train, for instance, that's all you see. They're just, just getting ready for the, signs for and the, the ball training, gone. training ground matches, mate. That's what they're doing. So well, I, I thought that actually, but uh, yeah. um, so next one is from actually, if we've all got to decide on one between the four, we're, which one we're going for? I think um, personally, um, if I'm not thinking on me heart here, I think on me head, I think the furlough, the staff's the most important. I'd say, especially if, if they're going to end up putting them down to 60% instead of 80 as well, like, yeah, it's yeah. got to be that. Mm. Really, yeah. I think I would probably say that was a given as well, to be honest with you. The third or staff, I'd probably say that was a given. I'm yeah, sure I read that, that was the case. Away, I think. So the I'm athletics. sure I read that that was kind of one of the, the priorities when they came in. Number one. Once yeah. you, that was kind of, yeah, get, get the staff back in. I do love the idea of Keegan stand mind. Do love it. It would be unbelievable, wouldn't it? It's he so deserves it, It is. Something is, it. yeah. Like it, it's weird because of renamed stand. I remember when the Gallagher became the South Stand and the Brown Hill Stand. The these became a John Hall Stand. These were John Hall Stand, wasn't it? No, well, I, did the East Stand not used to be? Was it the popular, popular, yeah, popular, popular side? side? Yeah. Was wasn't it? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've had a couple of drinks here, so I'm, I'm going to say something that I probably shouldn't. I'm not going to say the person that it is. You know, but I'm not going to say what it is. So furlough Degger, staff. Degger, that's not very good. Like, never start with that sentence. I'm going to say something that I probably shouldn't say. No, I, I probably shouldn't. Is this, is this, that, this happens every Degger's podcast, mate. doesn't it? That way, yeah, it, it is. I'm see just it. going to say it though about furlough staff. So, I know you all know that I know someone that works for the club, right? And mm-hmm. and, and he, um, your mate, my mate. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, Everybody that, that listens to the podcast know because you you drop his name every other week. Nah, don't, they don't. No, they don't. I, they I don't say his name. Um, but he's my be- best mate, lovely lad, right? Anyway, he he had said that he received his letter and his email to say, listen, you're on furlough, it's 80% of wage, right? Period. Um, there wasn't going to be any further on that, it was just 80%. He then got a call off his boss to say, right, you're back at work X date, I'm not going to go into that one, but you're back at work at X date and you are going to be on 100%. And the only way that that was going to happen was by the takeover. Because Ashley had already said that there's no way I'm paying the extra 20%. It's 80% and that's your mm-hmm. whack. But he is being told by his boss that he will be on 100% wages. Is it, so... is it not a case where the Premier League are, <coughs> are trying to get games played again where you're literally going to have to have staff back in to, to manage the facilities in and around? Oh, so you, are you saying there that the Premier League may be paying that 20%? Is that... No, no I'm, I'm, I'm saying that if the Premier League want games to be played... Yeah. And then you, you, without going into the the role which he does, you're gonna have cert, have to have certain things. Did you just blow a kiss at me there? No, no it was you and I was to the wife. You can see Lisa in the uh, the reflection in the window. I, right? saw, no, I, was, I was really looking. I just saw. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one, Chris. Like that, <laughs> the the they're, they're making plans to get the the teams to start training to get games going back on. So regardless of this situation or around when when things might or might not happen with the takeover, regardless of that, t- games need to happen. So staff need to go in. I mean, it was only a week, two weeks ago that, that there was staff in uh, in the ground cutting the grass. So yeah, they're, but, they're sorry, not getting so... somebody off the street to come in and do that either. So they're going to no. have to have paid some of the ground staff to go in and work and cut the grass on the pitch. Well, there might be like a little chava knocking at the door saying, I'll oh, cut your grass for a fiver. Possibly. If you strimmer. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you, yeah. you've already got teams that are that are actually back back training now. Um, Spurs were the first one to have have people go back into the ground, uh, into the training ground and stuff like that and start doing training. So it's every, it's... everybody else will start following suit. I think it's absolutely mental, mate. The thought of us going back to play football, like, you know, honestly, lads, I'm sorry, I just... Mm. No, I'm, with you. Like. I'm with you, mate. I think there's a couple of questions anyway about that. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. the next one is from our good friend, the Reverend. 
He says right. right. rank in importance. Each of these things in terms of what the new ownership ownership should focus on. So, in order, the women's team, the academy system, the fans forum and engagement, and training ground improvements. So, rather than rank them in four, I'll get each year to pick your top thing on that one. Can you just see them again, sorry? Yeah, so we've got the women's team, academy system, the fans forum and engagement, or the training ground improvements. We'll start with Mark this time. See, there's two, there's two answers based on that, that situation that we just had before around longevity or immediate reaction and something happening. Um, so if, as a, as a goodwill and an immediate reaction, I would say what you need to work on is the engagement with fans and, and the fans forum kind of thing to, to, to G that excitement up and get everybody back on side and that kind of thing but from from a perfect world point of view then for me the, the training training ground and facilities to to get the best of what we've got here and to attract the best players and stuff like that you need those world class facilities yeah I, I'm so it depends whether there. it's some, something quick or something's a little, little bit longer term project if I had to pick one I'm with you training ground it, it's where the players spend the majority of the time so you want your players to be on top form, top of their game. And to do that, you need to give them the the, the training ground and facilities and gym and, and whatever other things technology-wise that they need to recover from injuries. We don't do that at the minute. We've got wheelie bins. We've got paddling pools. We've got half-painted doors. I think we went on the last one. It's It needs huge, huge... Unacceptable, injury. isn't it? It's unacceptable, yeah. really. Isn't it's it? embarrassing, mate, to be honest with you. Absolutely embarrassing for a Premier League yep. club. To, to look like that, the training ground will look like that. I think all four of those things that he's listed there are, are, are important things. Oh, yes. um, and and he, he, like some people might think, well, why is why is he mentioning the, the women's team there? But the, the women's game is 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 kind of improving more and more, and you're seeing more of it on mainstream TV and stuff like that. So it, it is becoming uh, bigger and bigger. Um, but from that whole you know, the negative side of things that people look at, at Saudi around the quality and, and, and that kind of thing, that again, it would be a, a very good publicity kind of thing to, to say, to, to put, you know, put stuff into that to say, you know, we're promoting more um, the, the, women's, the women's team and the women's game within there because the, the club at the minute do absolutely nothing to I think, mate, to I think it's only, only the last year or two where the club have, have got involved yeah, with the women's in, game. Yeah. They had nothing to do with the club a few mm. years back. They didn't want anything to do with them. Which is embarrassing in itself. So, but to be fair, it's the same club that you know would, didn't have a, a, a reserve team for years. I'm pretty years sure. I'm pretty sure like that. the club wouldn't even buy them strips. They yeah, wouldn't I even buy them. Had to, strips. Had, to buy, had to buy their own. That's disgusting, isn't it, man? What the fuck? Horrendous. I think. I think it all stemmed from the weren't the weren't the official weren't Newcastle official. women's but team. We didn't were. have an official team, yeah, so yeah. I think it's it started ridiculous. at the university you know, or something like that. I know, sorry, I will answer the, the order in a minute. I, I think what you say, Mark, spot on, actually. And I think, are you worried though at all? Because I am a little bit, you know, you're saying there that it would be fantastic for them as a PR, because obviously women's rights and all the rest of it, if them come in, and let's just say for argument's sake, that was top of their list, bang, we're going to do this for the women's team, blah, blah, blah. Are any years worried that a lot of the media and everyone is just going to go, well, they're only doing that because of yeah. because of X. Do you know what I mean? And that, 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 that they've, came, they've came on a lot of criticism for, for human rights and, and obviously the, the whole women's rights over in Saudi. But someone in, in the, the forum, which we mentioned at, at the very start of this, basically said that there wouldn't be a single female employee at Newcastle when these Saudis take over. Let's remember, there's going <laughs> to be ridiculous. someone sat on the board in Amanda yeah. Stavey that is going to be a female. Exactly. It's, that that's people absolutely warped if they are thinking that the Saudis are going to come in and go right. Every woman's lost a job. That, that's ridiculous. What, what goes on in your head to think that, man? Yeah, it's yeah. it's crazy. And, and like this is this is part of the frustrating thing that you know people the, 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 this whole impression that everything to do with Saudi Arabia is bad. It's a really bad place. It, it's not. Yes, they've got a, a, a reputation because of of what's what's gone on and historically, but 
you know, things need to, to progress. The, that country as a whole has progressed massively in the last couple of years, if, if not a little bit longer than that. They're doing a hell of a lot more than, than they ever did. And that's that's down to to that that crown prince. He's, he's it's, making it's, changes there right. and, yeah. and, and bringing in, doing more around the quality. Yes, they are still well behind the times, but let, let's not forget this. This is, you know, if it, if it wasn't for the, the millions and millions of, of pounds that they got from oil, that would still be a third world country. You'd be looking at it in the same the, the same kind of breaths as, as some of the other countries down in the, the, the Middle East there. it They've kind of came more to the front just because they found oil there. They've been able to sell the oil. They've got a lot of money and they've then had to start adapting to, to the Western way. It will be slow to do it. But, but things are, are, are changing over there. That that MBS, if you if you watch that documentary, the things that he's done, women there's no women could drive there. They had no, you know, they weren't allowed to drive. Yeah. He's he's allowed that. Exactly. They weren't allowed yeah. to have cinemas or theaters. He's now creating the best theaters and cinemas you could possibly imagine. They weren't allowed to have like um, it's it sounds weird, but like a almost almost like a house party and like playing music mm-hmm. that wasn't allowed. You weren't allowed to have all your friends around and like play music together. You just weren't allowed. He brought that in that you were allowed to do that. There's, it, it, there's a lot of things that he's bringing in that. It that could be arguable at a minute, though. That's a backward step, to be honest with you, because we kind of do that. Well, that's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah. It's, uh, so, no, I, and also what I want to say, sorry about that, is I honestly don't think that the MBS or anyone is going to have any, it's not going to be involved <laughs> that much. I really don't. Honestly, I don't. From the oh, day to day goings, he's literally he's going to be so far removed from the, from the organization. It's going to be quite unbelievable. So yeah. just, just to plug one of the previous podcasts, which we did, I done one with Ben Jacobs, where he, he went in this in, in detail, speaking about vision 2030, which is what Saudi Arabia want to aim for in regards to progression as a country and, and things like that. So, so that that's worth a listen. It's only 40 minutes long. So it's worth a listen just to hear the background. And it's not just all pro, um, the, the bin, uh, what's it called again, Dagger? Every time you say MBS, MBS. Mohammed bin Salman, bin Salman you get us confused MBS. every time you say Sorry. MBS. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you start thinking of credit cards. I'm, I think I start, start thinking of a sport. I mean, what <laughs> sports are you talking about here? <laughs> Some uh. American sport he's just made up. But yeah, on that pod- podcast, he talks about sports washing, the whole thing with, with oh. the Joshua fights, the WWE, and everything like that as well. Yeah. So it goes into a lot more detail than, than what we're just talking about. Of course, yeah. Um, next one is from Carl Richardson. He says, first off, hope you are all good. And in a dream scenario, once the takeover goes through, who would be your first three sign-ins? So three is a lot because I think we've said from day one on the podcast, we don't really get involved in the whole scouting sort of thing. But if we're we're putting one target in this, I think, Dek, you've always said Grealish, haven't you, over the last... Yeah, well, to be, to be as sad as I am, you know what I'm like on Football Manager, and that's like I'm gonna I'm gonna be a bit honest here. I, uh, I've created the full PIF group on Football Manager. I've got, of course, I've, you have. I, you know, I have. I've got the pictures of MBS there, the lot, right? But uh, on FIFA, on FIFA, MBS. I did it. On FIFA, I did it, and I, and I, the first sign I did was was Jack Grealish. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm just, I'm setting myself. Do you think? Do you think people are thinking Jack Grealish now is just because he's a popular name at the minute? No, well, do you know? Do you know what it is, right? There's a lot of times he's, he's been mentioned in the media of how good he's been and he's this, he's that. And when we played Villa away, um, don't get wrong, we didn't tour when you were well, mate. But I he was fucking unbelievable. Like, and I thought, Jesus Christ! Like, because a lot of people say, oh, he's like a, he's like a left winger type of thing. Bollocks! He, he played every single area of that field. He just ran the show, the complete show. And yeah. I thought, do you know what it is? You've really got it, like, and and I understand why people are saying you should be playing for England and et cetera, et cetera. Mark obviously well, it was him. says about his attitude, and I agree with you on that. Um, but I really feel I, I always say to you, how many times have I said this? And now I think our midfield is the weakest area. I really do. I think there's just nothing there. I mean, there's no doubt. Um, to have someone like him in midfield to 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 be able to have that presence and, and command the ball and want to drive it's, with the it's ball. It's a confidence thing as well with him, isn't yeah, he? He's, he's is, a cocky yeah. little shit and sometimes is, you yeah. need that. Absolutely. Madison is the same for Leicester. I mean, mm. you yeah. know what I mean? It, it would be. I'd love to sign him. It's never going to happen, of course, because he's having a very successful part of his career there. But he's a cocky individual. He's cocky, you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's got that swag and Grealish has got that. And I think They're very similar, the pair of them, aren't they? They are. And I think every, very t- every good team and... needs one of them. Every good team needs that, that cocky. Yeah, you do, yeah. You do. 
Well, I've said I've, I've said on the last podcast that we did every successful team has got a couple of shit houses in it. Yeah, you, you need it. You need it for success. Mm-hmm. Look at look at Ronaldo, the biggest shithead in the in the world, and look at the career he's had. Yep. I always think of uh, the time when under Bobby Robson we had Bellamy. I mean, Christ. I mean, how mm-hmm. yeah. he is a shithead, but I absolutely adored Bellamy. Honestly, I every week him. I used to go, he was amazing, man. But you need that. You need someone that's going to fucking argue with everyone. You need someone that's going to tell the Rooney was like that for my United. Yes, he's a fucking arsehole and you do hate him, but. They have that 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 thing. Uh, don't they? they have that star. Not in the championship was like that. Yeah, mm. Well, you're right. Of course, he's not in the in the same mm. sort of league now, and, and I understand that. Oh, no, but yeah, you, you, he's you, that you need prick that, in the team, you? though. Yeah, you need that. Yeah. And let's be fair. Well, Joey Barton was hated nationwide, except us. We loved him because yeah. he was that little arsehole. Do you know what I mean? That was was being a dick, and I just feel like that's what you need. Everyone needs that, you know. So, sorry to go back to the question. Jack Grealish would be mine if, if it was possible. That would be mine. Is there any any other names that spring to mind? Does Willems get a mention? Or we're looking beyond that now? I think there's still. I, I, it's been realistic, isn't it? I mean, you're not going to get the best left back in the world. You're not going to all of a sudden wake up with Mbappe and Koulibaly yeah. and whoever. Um, I think Willems. He, he kind of he knows the team. He knows the club. He, he, he appeared to. You read what he's put on social media since his uh, injury. He seems to have really enjoyed himself here. So, um, made the way he talks, be... it seems like this is already in his plan that he signed yeah, it for the club. Like there's some sort of agreement. It, it yeah. Feel like that. I um. I and I think is he better than Dummett and Richie, who would be kind of competent? Yeah, I'd say bring him in, get him in. Yeah. What about um, Rose? What about Rose? Rose or him? Gone. Rose gone. Williams all day long. Yeah, he hasn't done enough for me. Like. That, that injury, I mean, Rose has been a little bit unlucky maybe in that the season ended when it did because he was starting to get a run of game. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, oh, sorry, the season hasn't ended, but you know what I mean, what's happened to him over the past uh, 10 weeks or so. Um, Williams, I, I think Rose in his best is better than Williams, but you don't know what Rose's best is these days since his injury. Yep, um, I, I would take out Jack Rowe. And my kind of, I, I mentioned him, I think on the last podcast, would be Ruben Neves from Wolves. I think yeah. he's a fabulous footballer. Him, like yeah. I love him. I, I, I was going to say Erling Haaland as well, but again, you've got that kind of realism. And is he going to want to come to Newcastle from Dortmund unless you give him like a million pounds a week now? Well, so, to, to be honest, we're we're desperate for a striker, aren't we? Yeah, I'll even him unless Wolves actually just just buy Wolves his first team apart from that goalkeeper. <laughs> See, mine would have been. My, my, we're, we're about a year off now we're a year two ahead I would have had Tammy Abraham if but now obviously yeah. unfortunately due to Chelsea's transfer ban <clears throat> he's now settled there he's now a, a number one kind of guy for yeah. them now but he was on loan at Villa yeah. wasn't he only last year I think or the year before uh, yeah. that would have, I, I really think he's got everything like I really Couldn't do fucking hit a bond dome when he was up here at St James's like no hey well every, it, it, I think Harry Kane is probably the best in the in the in the world and every time he comes in our building, he's absolutely shit, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, yeah, um, he stinks the place so out, mate. He really does. He's, he's bad, you know, and, and everyone's going to have bad times. Like, but uh, So uh, I, I apologise, I'm going to ask another question here. I shouldn't do this. But So do, do you feel that, do you feel if we had all the money in the world to spend that we might have, that we couldn't get the right team around Joe Linton? Like, do you feel that Joe could be with better service, with better, maybe a better strike partner or a better number 10 or something like that? Or? I, 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 I don't honestly, think. Yeah, I think we'll bin him. I think with all the money, if if, if you keep Joe Linton in the team with all the money in the world, kind of as you say, you don't play him as a centre forward. He's not number nine. Mm. Mm. Playing behind or something like that. He's, he's done okay on the wings when he's played out there. Or behind the front man, my big thing, behind like a. I was going to say Rondon there. Like, Rondon's up <laughs> a different class again, is he? But yeah. behind like a, a goal getter. So, so are you saying <clears throat> move him on? Sorry, like move him, sell him? Yeah. I think That's so, fine. like, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I think he's just, yeah, I, I kind of, I, I really want it to work for him. Yeah. And I don't think he's a bad footballer necessarily. It's like when they signed him, um, John Dahl Thomason, and it just didn't it didn't work. They kind of signed him. It's, circumstances are a bit different. Thomason came in when Shearer got injured and Ferdinand got sold. Um, whereas Joe Linton's come in to be a player that he isn't. Yeah. It's like when, when, yeah. when, when, Sun, when, when Sunderland signed Tori Andre Flo. Yeah. He, when Niall Quinn retired, expecting him to be Niall Quinn, but he wasn't that kind of footballer. Yeah. I think, like, like, like about... I said, I don't think I don't think Jordan on, on is a bad player. I just think he's arrived at this club at the wrong time in his career, mate. 
Yeah. I think that's all that it is. I think um, when you talk about Thomas and I mean, he he left us to then go on AC Milan and won the Champions League and that. Do you know what I mean? So there's obviously yeah. there's all there was always a player there. Just we didn't maybe well, just go just, yeah, we just know. didn't play it. We just yeah, look at more strength. recent times. Look yeah. look at if, um, both De Jong. the Youngs. Yeah. yeah, look at the De Jongs more yeah, recent yeah, times. We're Jong, playing big big Kibella. lad De Jong on the left hand wing man. Yeah, I know. At one point, look at Tovan. I, I do want to say about. Joe Linton and, and, and I, I agree with everything you're saying to be fair I think of course if you're thinking about moving you know moving on to that next level he has to go of course but the one thing I will say about him you know he hasn't scored since God knows when but he still played every week didn't he every week you know mm. and a, a lot of players a lot of players that aren't from this area or from England or whatever would have just threw the towel in there and went ah oh, fucking I'm injured do you know what I mean like and just he played yeah. through the injuries as well he, mate fucking, bless he's him. definitely you got some to give him credit for that 100% agree I, I like him I like him I like him I don't think. I mean, he's definitely not like when you look at you look at like what Shearer did or Cole did or Demba Barr did or CC did when they're getting like 20, 30 goals a season. He's he's not a kind of player. He's not going to be that kind of number nine who's like mm-hmm. a ruthless um, match winner. But he, it's weird because I've, I've obviously got a season ticket kind of you know, the vast majority of games a season. I'm still not sure where I'll play him. I don't know what well, we, we, we had this argument and I'm not going to hog it here because <clears> I don't know that question but we had this argument about oh he plays out left he plays out left and he, he's a good left then you've got Saint there and I'm sorry you're never going to get a game because nah, you right, are playing yeah. Saint ahead of him every fucking mm. second of the, of the week you know what I mean so it's yeah. it's a very difficult one but sorry to digress a bit there no no you're right and that's, I think that's part of the problem is that like he's not oh, I said to myself he's not like the, the kind of thing like what Rondon was or like what before him. even Dwight Gale in the championship was someone who's like kind of a goal getter, you don't drop Rondon for uh, Rondon, obviously. You don't drop St. Maximum for him, you wouldn't drop um, Almiron for him. No way, no. Um, and where does that leave you? So, if you're thinking about if you're thinking about playing him as a 10, let's say you were thinking of that, then I'm, I'm on about yeah. Jack Grealish, and I honestly believe Jack Grealish could, could be that 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 kind of role. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying he's I, I necessarily think, yeah. a 10, but that's how I would like to play him, and I think I'd rather Grealish. I think Grealish is a better player than Joel Linton. I don't think there's yeah, any cool. arguing about that. Like, yeah, yeah that. Imagine having yeah. him as a 10 compared to Joe Linton, you know what I mean? Oh. But anyway, sorry, that's an argument for a different day. Right, a, one, a one for me that I, I might uh, could could be a bit of a left field one is look at um, Gabriel Jesus at uh, City. Yeah. He's, oh. You know, he doesn't he doesn't get that many games there. He plays second fiddle to uh, Aguero most of the time, but he's he's a hell of a goal scorer. And he's, he's probably yeah. a little bit like Rondon in, in that kind of got a bit of strength about him, but he's certainly got that blooming, that goal scoring ability. So, you know, he could could we sneak him away from there. I signed him on the money, give him that number nine, nine strip. I did honestly, he's on the transfer list. I wouldn't um, mind seeing him up front in. Yeah. Because right, he is it, second it, fiddle at City, like yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm thinking. That's that, the sort that of player that we're yeah. probably going to be going for, isn't it? <sighs> Fuck me. He, he's second fiddle at City, but please with that. Like, like, fucking get this dummy back. Like, if we're signing these fucking players, <laughs> like, is <laughs> it here? Like, God almighty, man. How but, you know, if if he's got, you, you don't know. We, we don't know what you know what what he's like as a player. But if he's if he he's got that about him, where he wants to actually Christ. to go on and and do it, and you know, really push his push yourself I mean Aguero's time is running out a little bit at City but he's still yeah. their first choice there but you know he he could come away from there he could be an absolute superstar here unbelievable man you know, unbelievable. but he could equally go to some other massive massive clubs yeah. around the world that, that straight away is going to be playing in the Champions League and, and stuff like that and where, you go back a good few seasons away from that you that's, are right that's the there. concern and it, it does go to the point though about your manager doesn't it of course and Steve Bruce, you know, I hear a lot of reports here about him staying in charge here and deserves a chance. You know about Jesus here with this type of money. Well, Steve Bruce ain't approaching Jesus to say, yeah, come and join our programme. You know what I mean? This is where, again, you need to have a really world-class manager in place. Well, right? I, I yeah. mentioned this on, on social media the other day when people were saying Bruce deserves a chance. I, I'm not saying he deserves a chance. I'm saying that would be probably the, the most appropriate thing to do, just let him finish the rest of the games if they do get played just because yeah. of familiarity with the squad and things like that then as soon as that season ends bin him move on to the next one yeah. and I've said to the people that were saying he deserves a chance with the money no he doesn't because I said if you win the lottery do you still go and drive the same car the next day do your shit you go and buy the, the biggest fastest fucking car you can afford can I 
you, you're absolutely right, Chris. I, I'm sorry, I just want to mention something. But look, Edwards, last night, I don't know if you've seen that, where, or yeah. sorry, maybe it was yesterday, he had put an article on about Bruce about how he had done well, and there was there was hell on. <laughs> like, people were just out to get him last night, big time. And and that's fair enough, that, I'm not arguing with that, but I think what annoys us about the situation, right, is that someone will say Bruce has done well up until this point, and we're in a position that nobody expected to be. But then someone's counter-argument to that is, well, he shouldn't have been anywhere near that job in the first place, so fuck him, he's a dick, blah, blah, blah. But that's, but that's not the question, though. The question is, and the point is, are we in a better position under Bruce at this exact second than you expected to be? And everyone surely has to say yes to that. I, that's what Absolutely, I, I yeah. I, yeah. I, I thought it'd be rock bottom this season. With Absolutely. Raymond Absolutely. And I, I kind of, I, I agree with both. I think Bruce, I think the, the two things are mutually exclusive way and kind of say Bruce has done a good job. Which is, I think we all agree on um, on here what I've done in the past. Certainly. But he he shouldn't be. If a Premier League club in 2021, 2022, whenever football comes back, doesn't appoint Steve Bruce. Yeah, no, no, and you're right there. And, and I, I'm not disagreeing with that. I just think that sometimes the, the argument does sway where someone says he's doing well and the, the retaliation yeah. is, well, he shouldn't even be there anyway. Well, that's not, that's, that's not the. The narrative. Sorry, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm it, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going. No, away. don't worry, mate. Don't worry. No, yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. I don't think you're wrong. That guy at all. I'm going to say, like, um, I, I, it just annoys us, that mate. Just annoys. I, 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 I'm going to like him, and I, I didn't. I wouldn't say I disliked him to start with. Really, I mean, how he left Chevy Wednesday was a bit kind of yeah poor. I thought. But would, but then, would you say that he's handled himself very well though through all of this bullshit? Like, I mean, even even now, even oh, now, yeah, I, he he could have been. He could have been leaking all sorts of shit to whoever he I wants. I think, mate, I think the turning point, well, I don't think he could leak stuff because I don't think anyone's got a fucking clue what's happening apart Aye. from Mike Ashley, to be honest with you, mate. I don't even think Charlie's got a fucking clue. No, well, he, he, did, he didn't when he should have knew, <laughs> let alone yeah. now. So, so yeah. um, the, the turning point for me, as, as character wise, was when he stood up for himself yeah. in that press conference. Yeah, with, with, uh, he, he'd done himself fucking world, like, Unbelievable yeah. amount of fear. Me and you were on the bus on the way back, weren't we? And I showed on the phone, we were looking, and and I think we all were like, "Fucking good on you!" Like, do you know what I mean? Good on like, you. I, I've, I've got unbelievable amounts of like respect for someone that'll stand up for themselves in that sort of situation. And yeah, totally. everything that he said that day was correct. It's it was great to see because we've seen certain, certain managers crumble under pressure of journalists mm. and Bruce probably because of the experience he's been around as a player he, he played for Man U he, he's been God knows how many clubs He's he fights his corner every single time and yeah. credit to him yep. I, I don't like Bruce I'm sorry I don't like I don't, I don't <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> you heard it here first I don't like Bruce that is a headline <laughs> <laughs> you've said it now I, I, I don't dislike Rafa him facts. Like, I, 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 <laughs> um, like when it comes to like being the end of his um, his time, I'm being told off of everything too loud. Oh God! So, yeah. I can see the door. I can see the door open. Um, <laughs> I don't dislike Bruce. Um, not what you said two minutes ago. I'm for turning. It's it's the COVID. It's got us like he he brings in bits. Um, Rondon, be Rondon's fault, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but like, when it if if it, if his time's up, this after the take over, the season ends, however it ends, if they play the games, if they cancel the season, whatever, he's done a good job. Yeah. And the, the football's been fucking awful to watch. Yeah, yeah. Mm. it's been terrible. But the results are the results. We've had a lot of um, luck. We have had a lot of luck. I must to be won. honest with you, I, I don't oh. necessarily say it's luck. We've, we've had Debravga. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I hear that argument a lot, you know, and 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 honestly, God, I mean this as well. You go back to Rafa's day, um, and look at my United. We we'll beat my United. I remember it was Jabal Rafa's debut, yeah, it wasn't yeah, it? Back it was game? one nil, yeah. yeah. Matt Ritchie scored. He saved about four hundred and eighty-seven shots, right? Mm-hmm. They were all, yeah. they all should have been goals, right? And we all knew Dubravka was fucking unbelievable on Rafa because he saved the team yeah. countless amounts of times. And mm-hmm. but for some reason on that Bruce, that just gets thrown as oh, well, only good because of him. I, I will. I'll go back and I'll say this again. We lost our two top goal scorers. We lost Perez and we lost um, Rondon. Rondon. And yeah, then yeah. and then Bruce has come in, who is absolutely nowhere near as good as Rafa. We all know that, and has had to try and pick up the pieces. And he's fucking picked them up quite well, to be fair to him. And I think if if the the season ends or ends now or ends in the games, whenever it ends, 
he leaves, and I think personally for him would have his held uh, uh, held high because like he's doing all right, he's doing canny. Quarterfinals of the FA Cup, whenever been there since two thousand and fucking dot, whenever that is, you know what I mean? Like we, we, it's been okay, and we, we haven't been in the bottom three since September last year. Haven't been in the bottom three since September last year. Yeah, I, I, I can't understand how how people can say he's done a bad job because yes, because he hasn't. Yes, it hasn't been enjoyable. The, the whole time it's been pretty awful. It it points some of the displays have been absolutely shocking. But we've got we've got results. As you say, sometimes we, we mightn't have necessarily have deserved those results. But you make your look. You know you've got to keep going. Yeah. How many late goals did we score? You know that that shows Chelsea, it. Chelsea at home was the that, one. Wasn't it? Well, that's it. Yeah, look, yeah. Look, at Everton, look at the Everton game, mate. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so to me, that, scored that two shows goals in a minute in the ninety fourth minute. Fantastic, that, you know. And that, that that shows that there's there's something there about about the players, about yeah. the the relationship that they've got, that yeah. they, they don't give up. That that's that's kind of been drilled in them to keep going. And, and that's and that's what we want, mate. Isn't it? I know, you know. Well, you it's just that, want that people that try, isn't it? You know what I mean? You just want people that try. And I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting emotional here. Yeah. Right, carry on, Chris. Sorry, mate. Oh, no, nah, mate, it's that whiskey, mate. That's what it is. Sorry, I know. Well, I started with a full bottle and we're. we're... Can you see it? Getting there. Oh, you can't see it, can you? But no, we're good. halfway doing. We're halfway doing. Sorry, right. I apologise. We'll, we'll, we'll go for a couple more just so Bessie's not yeah. waking his full house up on this yeah. one. Right. <laughs> so um, this one comes in from Shane Saunders. Okay. He says, so Shane lives in Ireland, Dublin, to be precise. He says, can each one of you say the word curry? I am obsessed with Jordy's saying that word for some bizarre reason. Well, we'll not, we'll not say it like a macam, because I know how a macam yeah, yeah, They say, say Kerry. Yeah. Kerry, yeah, they Kerry. say. Kerry, right, yeah. The worst, the worst. So we'll start with Mark. Say curry for a mate. Curry. Dagger. <laughs> curry. Curry. <laughs> it sounds like translating it because <laughs> Mark is like, curry. Like, curry. <laughs> curry. This, is the, it. this is the weird thing though, because even like amongst us, we we'll all still say it slightly differently. Different accents, yeah. yeah. So besties say curry, man. Curry. 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 <laughs> Me and Chris I are similar, in, I think. Curry. Yeah. I lived in um, like Norwich for a couple of years, like you know, 10 years ago now. And whenever I go back down, they make they say photocopier. 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 Uh, I, I don't know if people would go photocopier. I think it's, it's the second like, O, that kind of... It's like Rua La Cola. Rua La Cola, aye. Rua La Cola. You know, or Rua La Cola. What's his face? Rua What's a comedian called? Uh, McIntyre. He says, was it? It's Kawasaki. Kawasaki. Pooba Scooba. That's and something a else. That's a macam, that one, isn't it? Poop a scooper. Yeah, but we say poop a scooper. It's poop just a scooper. Well, when, when, when I go on poop holiday, there's, I a, there's, a, a computer. there's a couple of people I know and they always say, like, it's, it's, we always put an A at the end of everything. So, like, scooter and, and, uh, all the other word is Google. Say Google. Google. And no Google. one seems to say, I no one says it like that. So I go, oh, Google. And like, that's not good. It's Google or it's, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, no, it's Google. Like, and so, so what I've noticed between the, the north and the south of the River Tyne, is how we say the word toy. Do you say toy or do you say toy? Toy. Toy. I say toy. So, toy. so me and Dick are going toy and those two are going toy. toy. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm toy as well. You're a toy. Is what, that you're... not one of them things you wear around your neck? See, it's, it's a north, it's a <laughs> north it and south thing. Mark, say it again, Toy. 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 Oh, hey. Toy. That's toy really over here. Get this toy <laughs> over here. Toy. Like, does any of you say mirror as in mirror? Because I'm no, no. off the podcast right now. If you do, no. mirror. See, that, that's, that's one, Chris. Look that's the one mirror. Like, with, with an E at the end, so it's mirror. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's mirror. Mirror. and scooter. Mirror. Whereas I hate, I hate it when people say mirror. 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 Me mum. Mirror. Me mum would always call you what? food food. Mirror. What? What do you call it, Mark? Mirror. 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 Look in the mirror. Mirror. Adam, mirror. 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 Just get him off now, thanks. <laughs> take him off the screen right now. <laughs> what, what do you say? Like... Like mirror or mirror? Mirror. 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 I can't even... Let's look in the mirror. Hi, oh, mirror. hey, we've got problems. Yeah, like. <laughs> but mirror. yeah, I, th- I think it's mirror. a north, That's north and that. south of the river thing. You know, where we say toy of the differently. River. No, you live north of the river. No, but you live north, and that's why you say toy instead of toy. What north of south of the river? Say Toy Story <laughs> three. Say North. Toy Story. Toy Story 3. See? Uh, weird. Weird. Yeah, that's really weird. 
Weird. There's another. Oh, we don't pronounce with T's in the middle of words either. You know what that's called? Castle. Oh, like castle. Mm. It's called a glottal stop. It's called a what? Glottal. G L O T T E L stop. Mate, that sounds Ironically, something that you would get on ale draft in a random little pub. <laughs> it's. Sounds best like you would have tried that. Own, best you would have tried that. It sounds like something that you pay 10 euros for in Amsterdam. But yeah. They, no, it's, uh, it's, when you pronounce, it's when you miss the T's out, you go like, ironically, in glottal, it's glottal, or bottle, or Yeah, throttle. which don't pronounce T's. Uh, it's, it's called Look at Degas face. Degas only just figured this out now that he doesn't pronounce T's. <laughs> no, I, you do I definitely do. Do you? Bottle, bottle, bottle you do. Bottle? Bottle? bottle. bottle. Have a, yeah. yeah, can I have a bottle? Yeah, bottle. Oh, bottle. You didn't say Bottle. You say bot. Oh, no, I have a fair comment. I fair comment. Yeah. I, but still bot. <laughs> bot? <laughs> you love a bit bot. <laughs> right, next How question. How did we get on to this? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> next oh, this question, just saying, Curry. We'll, we'll end it on this one. So this one's from Ben Logic Game, and he says, how many takeaways have you had so far during lockdown? I've, to be honest, I've lost count count. How many days I haven't? I've lost count. <laughs> like, I've been, having, I've been having two teas. <laughs> I think I had two. Is that you're the name for all the ones you missed in your words? You pronounced it. You're you're <laughs> me and you've been dead for two weeks, like, though. We were dying for a couple of weeks. Like, I saw. Right, two. Deca, I bet you're up there with me. Me and Mark. Deca's had two this not, week, man. No, honestly, not. Well, that's true. Bollocks. Um, no, no, no. You know me, mate. I'm fucking trying my best. Like, um, I was like eating a salad and had a picture of a kebab pizza on my phone while I was eating the salad, like just pretending. You know what I mean? Um. <laughs> But uh, have I, you ever tried I, a salad with garlic dip? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I hundred percent. Yeah, salad dressing. Do you, know, do, you know, do you know? what I used to do years ago? Honestly, right? My mate used to come over and he, fucking hell, man, he just pouch like fuck. And uh, he used to come with a kebab all the time. We used to watch NFL and that. And I was like, I just made like my cholesterol's through the fucking roof here. I need to calm down, like. So I'd have a salad, and he'd bring a kebab <laughs> over, and I'd eat all my salad, and I'd have, I'd have one bit of kebab at the end of him. And that would be like as if I've had the kebab. <laughs> I'd be full, and then I'd have that one bit of kebab. Because you, 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 you can't just get a kebab with... with salad instead of chips. No, because you're still having the fucking full kebab, aren't you? And that's the fucking problem. <laughs> ah, but... but mind you, though, last night though, me and the band, right, we had 14 inch uh, bolognese because you've been having nothing else. Uh, bolognese, full, massive kebab. Let's tell huge. people that, that your band's only what a year old. Me and the band. No, I'm not <laughs> just <laughs> all. Jordan was a bed. Um, <laughs> No, it was with Leila, but she had never tried kebab before. So the last time we did this, I says, Leila, try some kebab. She went, no, Dad, it looks awful. I'm like, come on, man. So this time, put it in front of her. Leila, we're not watching the film until you have a bit of kebab. So she turned a bit off and she like... You've blackmailed your daughter <laughs> oh, totally, to have totally, kebab. I turned the telly off, man. I turned the telly off. I went, it's off. I went, if you don't try kebab. And she tried and she went, it's a bit spicy, Dad, but it's nice. And I was like, there we go. I cried. It was a fantastic moment. Like, was that up there with better than the moment where she was born? Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course it wasn't. Of course it wasn't. Bless Just wait a few but, years uh, until she's badgering you every every other night to have a a, a kebab wrap for a tea. Oh, no, absolutely, It'll happen. Not. absolutely, It'll absolutely happen. not. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, should I? Get wrong for that. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, Mark, Mark, Mark had said about his being, um, you know, <laughs> wanting a kebab wrap, and oh, I said, "Good, uh, good, good." <laughs> Adam's gonna have to go back and put a bleep over your mouth now, man. Honestly, that's a whiskey talking. The whiskey talk, right? We're ending it. We're ending it. What was the question? Right. Oh, how many? How many takeaways you had? Yeah, yeah. I probably say about five, five or six. Okay, right. This week. We'll, We'll end it now, okay? <laughs> before Tiger right. has another sip. Well, I just want to ask one question before we all go, and okay. I want Adam to give like a wave or something, whatever you want. How confident are we for the takeover? How is everybody? How are you feeling? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred. Adam, Adam. Oh, no. eighty-five. Adam's always missed that bloody negative. Well, that, he's, that, he's like forty like percent in. Well, Sixty. Sixty. <laughs> Lower. 40. 30%. 40? He's a 40%. You're 40% confident this is happening. So people, you can't see Adam here, but we yeah. can see him because he's making all this happen right now. But 40% and the rest of us are 100. Oh, Adam, you need you need a I can love you, you like. I love you. I love you, but you're fucking stupid. It's not allowed cans. I get so upset. Well, anyway, that's true, I do. Um, 
if we ignore Adam's 40, hopefully the next podcast we'll have is, is the one, mate. Or the one that is fucking, it's here. That's all, man. So shall we, shall we make an effort to have a drunken podcast? Yes. Well, yeah, I think so. Adam's face. I, I Adam's face. With, with Decker. <laughs> I know I'm I'm pissed now. Like I do apologise. There's going to be lots remember, of like blue stars over people's mouths. Remember the last time when uh, Decker got pissed on the podcast? That was the best podcast ever. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed <laughs> every single was second that? of that. Oh, that was ridiculous. Christmas. That was embarrassing. Embarrassing. Uh, terrible, was Christmas terrible. party, mate, wasn't it? Or something it, like that. It was, yeah. And I was the only one drinking, yeah. So I was obviously drinking all the. He drinks. just came terrible. in from the cricket, hadn't he? Decker went, right. with, Decker went to his Christmas party at work and he was the only one drinking. Who did honestly, that? honestly, honestly, I was. I. It was hell on that night. I. Right, lads, we'll call it a night. We've been going a while and Adam's got some work to do now. Thanks to that yeah. little blip thanks, by Adam. Decker at the very end. So, <laughs> thanks to Guillermo Clothing. Look how pissed off he is. Thanks to Jordy Gifts. And that's what's done. And we'll see you when we're rich. <laughs> <laughs> the morning. Morning. <laughs> Cans. <laughs>